My name is Blake, and I did my first whatnot auction on Friday the 13th. The day of good luck. Did I have good luck? No. My first whatnot auction was an absolute train wreck, a calamity, a catastrophe, a misfortune of all misfortunes. I did so many things wrong. But you know what? I'm gonna do it again. I thought it was a great experience, so we're gonna go over the things I did wrong, the things I did right, and why I think whatnot is best for buyers and sellers, because it hits this sweet spot that just, mm, chef's kiss. So what were my mistakes? Because you're gonna wanna avoid doing these things. Firstly, this is not totally my fault. It might be, I don't know. I think it's a glitch. Uh, if you schedule your live stream and load inventory, painstakingly adding photos, adding descriptions, all that stuff for pre-bids, do not, I repeat, do not enter test mode and attempt to do a live stream because when you end that live stream, all of it's gonna be gone. What is the point of test mode? I don't know. I don't know if it was my fault, if it was their fault, it was a really, really, it was bad timing because I tested my live stream like five minutes before I was scheduled to go. I was like, oh yeah, I'll just pop in there, make sure the lighting's good. Make sure the sound's okay. Make sure I can see everything. And it was. And then I go out of there, I get some drinks out of the kitchen, I get everything set up so I can be, you know, in the zone. And it's gone. Totally gone. Mortified me. But as they say, the show must go on. And so, ill-equipped, I haphazardly stumbled through my live stream. And I want to thank everyone who was there. I ended up making about 200 bucks an hour. My estimation is I made about 60% of market value, but I made it in an hour. I mean, it's going to take me probably at least an hour to list that many cards on eBay. And there's no guarantee they all sell. So the way it worked, I was extremely happy with the end result. But the way I got there was just brutal. So first off, my live stream gets deleted. Secondly, my phone died about 45 minutes in. This kind of live streaming takes a lot of phone battery. I had my phone plugged in. I just wasn't, I wasn't aware of it. I had pretty bad awareness of my phone battery life left uh, because it just died in the middle of an auction. So I ended up selling a graded card for $6 when the market value was probably four or five times that. But you know what? Live and learn. The third thing I did wrong, and this is going to kind of segue into why it's such a great place to buy and sell, is I was trying to sell single cards as opposed to bundles, like four card bundles of single cards. And this kind of gets into what whatnot I think has to fix. Uh, and they really, as soon as possible, have to get on that standard envelope shipping like eBay does for sports cards. Right now, your first purchase under three ounces costs three fifty to ship and then a dollar after for every additional purchase that's great for larger things but for sports cards uh, a sports card in the top loader might weigh three or four grams so you're looking at like a hundred cards is gonna ship first class mail you know and that's not a hundred dollars it should be five dollars so they're gonna have to fix that I'm sure they are very attentive team very great team players but just for the time being that's kind of a mistake I think they have. So that's like one thing I think they should fix. I think it's kind of clunky, kind of glitchy, but that's all stuff that'll get ironed out. Really shipping is just like, cause so much of the cost of a card, if it sells for $1, then you don't want to pay 350 on top. Now to counteract that, the way that I think most sellers get around this and it kind of got confirmed after my stream, I saw how other guys do it, uh, is they offer like four or five card bundles because that still ships first class mail. And instead of paying four bucks for a $1 card that you bought for a dollar, you're paying a dollar per card, including shipping. And it just works out a little bit better, a little bit worse deal for the seller, but you're going to move so much more volume. And that's what whatnot is for me, at least it's just liquidation volume, giving people great deals and me moving inventory and boosting cash flow. That's what whatnot gets right. They get a lot of things, a hundred percent home run. Perfect. People are chopping at the bit to buy stuff because they know in a 20 second or a 30 second or a minute long auction, there are so few players that the chance for a great deal is right in front of them. And that sort of excitement, that engagement, that just makes selling and buying a really fun experience. I loved it. Again, links below. Even if you're not going to sell on there, 
check it out because there's so many opportunities to get great deals to even just resell. I've bought a few things and whatnot that I then sold on Amazon video games because they went for so cheap. And it was guys who just had like 10,000 games in their closet or something. And they're just going through them saying, here, here, here. They want to liquidate. I want inventory. It's a, a mutually beneficial relationship. And that's the crux of why I love whatnot so much. They're either going to blow up or get acquired because I just do not see them faltering unless something catastrophic happens. What will I do next time though? Well, first of all, my phone will be at 100%. I'm going to use a spreadsheet on my computer or that's where I keep track of the sales. Uh, what you do, and this is not going to make sense unless you're a seller, you just populate a generic listing like sports cards one through a hundred, make a spreadsheet on your computer and uh, one through a hundred, you write down what the card is. And then when you go to print off your labels, it says sports card one, sports card two, and then you use your spreadsheet to do your inventory picking. That's confusing to explain it took me kind of a second to realize what i was doing but once you get into the hang of things it really is not that bad out of my entire auction where i sold 75 things i only had like six buyers it was six people who were collectors or resellers but that's enough that's enough to move inventory i did the thing that i'm calling an avalanche auction i called it a king of the hill auction basically every card that didn't sell on its own individual auction. I put into a big pile, a proverbial metaphorical pile at the end and auctioned that off. So I moved all my inventory and the person who bought it at the very end got a phenomenal deal. They paid less than a dollar per card, but I've got so many cards here. I've got so much stuff here that that's really what I want to do. I'm even toying with the idea of just a warehouse liquidation auction where I go through and say, Hey, here's two six by eight shelves full of consoles. Uh, Guitar Hero guitars, VCRs, whatever, and just pulling them off and selling them for dirt cheap fire sale prices because it's just that easy to be a seller. And whenever it's that easy to move inventory, you're going to have great deals. And whenever you have great deals, you're going to get buyers. And it really is, I, I just don't see how this is not going to work unless somehow over the next six months, we get a Thanos snap and half of all the material possessions in the world evaporate because we have so much stuff and there are so many people who are resellers who are looking to move things. It just, to me, it's such a great opportunity. So what will I do differently next time? Well, next time, like I said, I'll just auto-populate generic listings. Uh, I'm not gonna do singles of low value cards. I'll do like four or five card lots, probably based by player, I think that makes the most sense. Player or maybe series of card. Uh, like if I'm doing video games, I'll do like, oh, here's five MLB PS2 games. If I'm doing books, I'll do here's five Stephen King books because that really does just bring in a lot of people because if someone wants one Stephen King book, they probably want four or five. They're either collectors or resellers. And when you bundle it up, the shipping just becomes so much more manageable. You get that much more excitement, that much more action. Because like I said, when sellers can liquidate stuff, there are good deals. When there are good deals, there are buyers. When there are buyers, there are more sellers. When there are more sellers, they can make more money. It's just, it completely goes in, in a circle. It's an infinity loop. It's an infinity pool. And we're the swimmers. Right? On that note, let's get out of here. Thanks for watching. Appreciate everyone who follows me along. I'll have my whatnot link below if you want to follow me there. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.